All right, and then when you're ready, you can come to the mat and you're gonna sit on a block in Sukhasana. To find the blocks. Oh, there we are. Okay, so it doesn't really matter which leg is in front, whatever is your dominant leg. Okay, and just wiggle the sit bones into the block so both sit bones are pressing down equally. And then wiggle the waist long. We're just going to create a nice long spine without too much effort. And then just check in with a feeling that the ears are over the shoulders, shoulders are over the hips. Okay, and then bring your hands to the thighs with the palms facing down to ground and close the eyes if that feels comfortable to you. And just take a moment to watch the breath at the end of this Monday. I feel like this can be kind of a tough time of year to try and fit everything in and do all of the things and uh, it's really really good that everyone is here tonight to just really carve out that time for yourself because oftentimes you know yoga meditation breath work is the first thing to go when we get stressed and really that should be the time that we prioritize it right so yay you you've already won at yoga tonight <laughs> so not only is it the holiday season but it is tomorrow is the winter solstice which marks the beginning of the winter season and is the shortest day of the year and the the movements the flow the asanas that we're going to be doing tonight and the breath is really the perfect way to honor and respect all of the things that nature does for us and to honor the changes that are taking place in the natural world. And it's really easy to kind of get caught up in the darkness of the days because, you know, if you're going to work and finishing work in the dark and it's cold, it can really get you down. So instead of resisting that extra darkness, tonight we're going to open up the heart and welcome the change and turn inward with intention. So we're going to be doing a lot of poses that really help us to look inside ourselves and to allow our bodies to adapt to the changing of the seasons. So we're going to be working on slowing down, which is also a challenge at this time of year, and letting go of what no longer serves us. And creating the space to breathe. So we're going to be working on a lot tonight by not really doing a lot. <laughs> to have a good yoga flow set up, and it's really poses to help us to turn inward and to feel strong and balanced. And take your hands to heart center, press the thumbs into the sternum and dedicate your practice today to someone who you feel just needs a little extra something in their life right now. And we're going to chant the sacred syllable of Om. So we'll inhale and then on the exhale, we will do the O for three seconds, the M for three seconds, and then the silence for three seconds. Okay, so inhale. Om. Okay, open the eyes, bring the hands back down to the thighs, and we're going to start with a breath technique called ka ka <laughs> Kapalabhati, sorry, Kapalabhati breath, which is, um, it really like stokes your internal fire. Okay, so start with a clear nose, so we're going to be doing all of this through the nose, so we're going to be doing short, sharp, 
um, exhalations through the nose. And as you're doing that, you're pulling your belly, your abdomen in and up. Okay, so you'll have short exhalations, short inhalations. So we'll be going through 20 rounds of that and then taking a few normal breaths. So it looks like this. So you're really forcefully exhaling through the nose and pulling the abdomen in and up at the same time. Okay, so just go through that for 20. And just see how that feels. It's also a really good core workout. Okay, and then pause. Pull in a nice long breath. Hold for a second. And then exhale. And then take a couple of normal breaths. And then we're going to do that for two more rounds. So one more round of 20 short, sharp breaths. And then another one after that. Okay. So take an inhale. And this warms you up from the inside out. And pull in a nice long breath. Hold for a second. And then exhale. And just breathe normally for a second. And then we'll do it one last time. So take a nice inhale. And with the exhale, Start forcefully exhaling through the nose and pulling the belly in and up. Oh, this sounds really weird when I'm doing it in the microphone. Okay, and then pull in a nice long breath. Hold for a beat and release and return to regular breathing. Great. Okay. Come on to all fours. And the hands are going to be directly under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Elongate the spine by reaching forward with the crown of the head and reaching back with the tailbone. Okay. And belly button to spine. Good. And then we're going to move through a few cat cows here. So let's say five. So inhale, arch. And exhale, round. And you can keep the pace as slow or as fast as feels good for you tonight. Really on your own breath cycle. So if you only get through three, that's fine. If you move to through seven, it's also fine. Just whatever feels good. You know, just try to listen to what's happening in your body tonight. Good. Keep the belly button reaching back towards the spine. Nice open shoulders. And then after the last rounding of the spine, come back to neutral. Bring the feet together and take the knees to the edges of the mat and then bring a block down in front. And we're just going to walk the hands forward, take the forehead to the block and guide the hips back towards the heels. So we're just making this really easy at the beginning, focusing on creating a nice wide lower back. Breathe into the belly area. So we're inhaling down towards the feet and exhaling up and out through the chest. Release the tension in the jaw. And inhale, come back to all fours. 
And then exhale, sit the heels back on, sorry, the hips back on the heels and inhale, slide the chin and chest forward. And we're gonna do this five times in a circular motion. So exhale, sit back, inhale, slide forward. Good, on your own breath cycle at your own pace. And start to notice where in your body you feel tension tonight. Where you're gripping. And where is feeling extra flexible maybe. Okay, we'll do one more. And then the next time you come to the top, just pause in all fours. Good. And then just check in, make sure the knees are right underneath the hips. Press down through all corners of the hands, spread the fingers, extend the spine, take the belly button all the way into the spine. And then exhale, take the right leg behind you, flex the right foot, and imagine that you're pushing against an imaginary wall. Nice, Tara, just lift the hips slightly. Good, and Namita, just lower the right leg down a little. Good, Andrea, push that wall away from you with the right foot. And then inhale the left, le left arm in front, reach forward with the fingers. So you're trying to reach the top and the bottom ends of the mat. Draw the belly button all the way in. Good, spread the upper back, spread the collarbones. And inhale, step it down. Great, and then belly button to spine again. Exhale the left leg behind. And just check in with the hips. Make sure both hip points are pointing down. Good. And flex that left foot and push back against the imaginary wall. Keep push, push, pushing. And then inhale the right arm. Reach the fingertips away from you. Good, so firm the shoulder blades and reach with the fingertips at the same time. Good, belly button to spine. And inhale, step the feet and the hands down. Good, okay. Exhale, bend the right knee out to the side. So the right knee is at 90 degrees like this. So it's at 90 degrees in line with the hip. So it kind of looks like a, da a, dad, a dog peeing against a um whatever tree okay so it's that to the side and then we're just gonna circle it a few times in each direction so if the knee doesn't go to 90 degrees that's totally fine just take it out to the side however feels comfortable okay and then change direction and we're pressing down through both hands equally still lengthening the spine belly button to spine Good, okay, and then come back to center. And we'll do the same on the other side. So belly button to spine, exhale, take the left leg out to the side, any amount. Okay, flex the foot. Try to keep the hips, hip points both pointing down at the same time as the left knee is opening out to the side. And then let's start to circle a few times in each direction. And you might feel or hear a few clicks. That's totally fine. Extend through the crown of the head and firm the shoulder blades okay, and change direction. Draw the belly button to the spine. And we're really leading these knee circles, or sorry, these hip circles with the knee. Good, okay, and then come back to center. Nice, okay, step the right foot out to the side. And press down through the outside of the right foot. So the pinky toe side of the right foot. Good, engage the inner um, thigh. Elongate through the crown of the head and the tailbone. Draw the belly button back to the spine. And we're gonna do some cat cows here. So inhale for cow, exhale for cat. And again, you can do this on your own 
breath cycle. Just creating fluidity in the spine. And this can be pretty challenging to, um, to get the movement, especially in the lower back. But the more you do it, actually, the easier it becomes. So keep pressing into the outside of that foot. And the next time that you um, do the cats, we're just going to come back to center. Good, and then engage the core, walk the hands back, and come to kneel on the left shin. Good, again, press down into the outside of that right foot. Engage the inner core, sorry, inner thigh. And exhale the right hand down the leg and inhale the left arm up and over. Belly button to spine. Reach over to the right with the left fingertips. So we're creating length in both sides of the waist here. And inhale, come back to center. Step the right foot in and come back to all fours. Good, lengthen through the crown of the head and the tailbone. And then step the left foot out to the side. And press into the pinky toe side. So you are pressing into all four corners of that foot. And as you press into the pinky toe side, it lifts the arch of the foot up. Engage the inner thigh. Elongate the spine, belly button to spine. And then we'll do some cat cows. So inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. Good, firm the shoulder blades into the back. Good. And then come back to center after the last one. And belly button to spine, walk the hands back, keep the left leg out to the side, and come to kneel on the right shin. Good, press into the outside of that left foot again. And exhale, slide the left hand down the left leg any amount, and inhale the right arm up and over. Look up underneath the right armpit. And with each exhale, you can just walk the left hand down the leg a little more. And it can just be millimeters here. Keep reaching with the right finger, right fingers over towards the left. Belly button to spine. And inhale, come back to center. Set the left foot in. And come down onto all fours. Draw the belly button into the spine, firm the shoulder blades, and then step the feet back into plank pose. So you can do plank pose either on the feet or the knees, on the toes or the knees. And firm the shoulder blades into the back. Reach forward with the crown of the head and back with the heels. And find some internal and external strength here. So get in touch with the breath especially as we stay here for a bit longer and it gets extra hard. Andrea, just lower the hips slightly. Nice. And inhale, gently lower the knees down. And keep the toes tucked. Exhale, step back to downward facing dog. And shift the, hip, shift the weight back to the hips. So we're taking the weight off the, the wrists here. And we're going to stay here for 10 rounds of breath. So this is a great opportunity to set some intentions for this next season. From basically December, January, February and half of March. And close the eyes if you like, if that helps you to turn inward easier. Okay, and open the eyes. Look forward with, to the hands and walk the hands forward. Sorry, walk the feet forward to the hands. And bend the knees, take the hands to the hips and inhale, come to stand.
Okay, step the feet about hip width apart. All 10 toes pointing forward. Press down into all four corners of the feet. So we're feeling the ground beneath you. Nice. So this is Tadasana. You can close the eyes here. And just take a second to connect with the earth beneath. Connect with your body. Feel all four corners of the feet pressing down into the mat. Feel the energy moving through your feet and up the central channel through your body and out through the crown of your head. Draw the belly button in towards the spine and open the eyes. Inhale the arms up, Advahastasana. Reach with the fingers, firm the shoulders, look up to the hands and exhale, swan dive forward, Uttanasana. And we're gonna take this sun salutation nice and easy. Just gonna to begin to bring some, a little bit of heat into the body, which is great for this time of year, especially right now. And you can just swing, uh, yeah, rock side to side a little. Look back through the thighs. And inhale, hands to shins up forward. Reach forward with the crown of the head and reach back with the tailbone. And exhale, hands to the mat, plank pose. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, down dog. Yes, we're just going to take it easy, like I said, and throughout this sun salutation, just bring some intentionality and mindfulness throughout the flow. And bend the knees, look forward to the hands, exhale, walk the feet towards the hands. Inhale, hands to shins, look forward. And exhale, Uttanasana. And bend the knees, take the hands to the hips. Inhale, come to stand. Good. Palms facing forward. Checking with the toes that they're all pointing forward. Reach with the crown of the head and press down through all four corners of the feet. Feel that connection with the ground. Inhale, the arms up, Advahastasana. Exhale, swan dive forward, Uttanasana. Hands to the mat or to a block if you have one close by. Release the tension in the back of the neck. Inhale, hands to shins, look forward. Belly button to spine. Exhale, step or jump the feet back to plank. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, down dog. Inhale the right leg into the air. Exhale, step the right foot forward and ground the back leg, ground the back foot, come to stand. Good, just step the left foot over to the left slightly. So the left foot is at 45 degrees, right foot is at 90 degrees. And then bend that right knee towards 90 degrees. Good. Press into the outside of the back heel. And then take the left hand, keeping the front leg straight. Exhale, slide the left hand down the back leg. And inhale the right arm up towards the ceiling. Nice. Engage your core. And on the exhale, bend the front knee a bit deeper. And this pose is challenging but also quite soothing. Really feel the connection with the ground and what's above you. Keep pressing down into both feet, feel that connection, engage the core and exhale, windmill the hands back down to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog 
And exhale, down dog. Take a breath here for a second. And then inhale the left leg into the air. Exhale, step it forward and come to stand. Step the right foot over to the right. And the right foot is at 45 degrees. Bend the left knee towards 90 degrees. Press into the outside of the back heel. And exhale, slide the right hand down the back leg. And inhale, the left arm up into the air. Look up at the hand. Fill your lungs with the air around you. It's a great opportunity to get a really good fill of your lungs here. And exhale, fold forward into that left knee slightly. And exhale, windmill the hands down to the mat, plank pose. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, down dog. And look forward to the hands. Bend the knees and exhale, either step or jump the feet forward. Inhale, hands to shins, look forward. And exhale, Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Press into the heels. Lift with the sit bones. So you're really lengthening the backs of the legs. And bend the knees, take the hands to the hips. Inhale, come to stand. Okay, one more sun salutation here. So connect the feet with the ground again. Feel those four corners of the feet. Really pressing into the earth. Okay, belly bone to spine. Nice. Inhale the arms up. Palms facing each other. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, hands to shins, look forward. Exhale, plank pose. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, down dog. I'm just going to stay here for five breath cycles. So close the eyes, soften the brain. We really don't need the brain in yoga. Let's just turn it off. And focus on how you feel, how your body feels the nervous system, the breath. The breath and the nervous system can tell us so much about what's happening in our bodies. And bend the knees, look forward to the hands, exhale, step or jump the feet forward. Inhale, hands to shins, look forward. Exhale, Uttanasana. And inhale, bend the knees, take the hands to the hips and come to stand. Okay, step the feet wide um, and you're going to just have a block close by. You're not going to need it right now, but you will need it. So step the feet about three and a half feet, feet are parallel. And then turn the left toes in 45 degrees, right toes out 90 degrees. And then step the left foot over to the left slightly. Good, keep pressing down into the outside of the back heel and then bend the front knee towards 90 degrees. Good. The torso is pointing towards the front, so it's like warrior one here. And then you're gonna take the hands behind the back, interlacing the fingers. Good, and draw the um, shoulder blades down and away from each other. It's really tempting to draw the elbows, to, sorry, the shoulder blades towards each other. We're still trying to create space. Okay, so draw the belly button in towards the spine, and then exhale, Fold forward so the chest is moving down towards the ground and the arms are moving back and away from the torso. Open the shoulders. 
release the hips and just release any gripping of the toes so just try to press down to all four corners of the feet and this pose is actually kind of like folding forward towards the earth in devotion so if you can just picture that you're praying towards the earth okay and then release the hands and inhale come to stand and parallel the feet and then turn the right toes in 15 degrees left toes out 90 and then you're going to take that block um, about alongside the left shin here Good, and there's a line between the two heels. Press down into the outside of the back foot. Bend the front knee and take the hand to the left hand to the block. Good. Bring your right hand to the right hip, and turn your head to look at the floor. So just kind of like around the foot. And then bend the front leg and shift the weight away from the back leg into the front leg. Press down into the block and lift the back leg until the thigh is parallel to the floor and again pretend that you are pushing against an imaginary wall so the block is now going to be right underneath the shoulder so if you need to move it forward or back you can do that and just keep looking at the floor for a moment to help the balance draw the belly button towards the spine and keep reaching that leg back Nice, so we're looking for it to be in line with the hip, but any amount is good as well. And keep pushing against that imaginary wall and just bend the left knee slightly, just so that we don't hyperextend the knee. And if you're ready, you can slowly turn the chest towards the right, twisting the torso and the hips. And then you can inhale the right arm up towards the ceiling. And you can either look down to the side, like straight ahead or up towards the hand, whichever feels good for you tonight. Keep pressing that foot into the wall, belly button to spine. And don't forget to smile through this. <laughs> it's not supposed to be something that we fight against, just do your best. Okay, and then take the right hand to the right hip, bend the left knee, step the right foot down, and come to stand parallel the feet. And then move that block to the outside of the right foot. And turn the left toes in 15, right toes out 90. Bend the left knee, sorry, right knee, take the hand to the block, left hand to left hip. And then we're just going to move that block so it's about maybe six inches in front of the right foot to the right. Because once we uh, move forward, that's going to be underneath the shoulder. Okay, so spring off the back leg and maybe move it forward a little bit more so it's right underneath the shoulder. And then reach that left leg back, press into the block and press the foot into the wall behind you. So the left hip is opening out to the side. So unlike warrior three, where both hips are pointing down, this time the, the left hip is pointing out to the side. Okay, belly button to spine, tiny little bend in the right knee. And then you have the option of looking down to the side or up and inhale the left arm up towards the ceiling if that feels good keep shooting that back leg back pressing into the wall belly button to spine and firm the shoulder blades so we're pressing down into this block but not collapsing into it okay the strength here is really in the right leg and to the, the strength of the back leg pushing back. And then take the left hand to the hip, bend the front knee, and step back onto the left foot. Good. Parallel the feet, and then turn the right toes in 45 degrees, left toes out 90. 
and then step the right foot over to the right so each leg has its own lane and then bend the front knee to 90 degrees press into the back foot and then take the hands interlace the fingers with the weird finger on top and then engage the shoulders draw them down and away from each other and exhale fold forward over the bent leg as though you are praying towards mother earth and keep pressing into the back foot feel the connection of both feet into the earth release the head release the shoulders and release the hands, take the hands down to the mat and inhale, come to stand. <coughs> Excuse me, parallel the feet and then jump the feet together. Sorry, this um, heating is killing my voice. It's, it just makes it so dry. <laughs> and I have really fizzy water. So if you need to um, stop for a water break anytime, obviously feel free. Okay. So um, come to the top of the mat, feet touching. Press down into all four corners of the feet and feel, just close the eyes for a moment here in Tadasana and feel how unbalanced maybe this feels, but also how the connection with the earth feels different when the feet are touching. And open the eyes and then inhale, sit back in chair pose. So weight is in the heels. Maintain gentle but full breaths throughout chair pose. Good, belly button to spine. Sit a little deeper into the imaginary chair. Lift the chest higher. Good, a couple of rounds of breath more. We really got to channel the inner strength here. And exhale, swan dive forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, hands to shins, look forward. And exhale, step back into plank pose. Chaturanga Dandasana. And inhale, up dog, firm the shoulder blades. And exhale, down dog. Couple of rounds of breath. Use this as the restorative pose. And inhale the right leg into the air. Exhale, step the right foot forward and ground the back foot. And there's a line between the two heels. The left foot, <coughs> sorry, is at 15 degrees. Bend the right knee towards 90 degrees. And then take the arms to shoulder height. Firm the shoulders. Nice. Just bring the torso back over the pelvis. Good. And reach forward with the fingers. Reach back with the fingers. With the back fingers. Good. And everyone just lift the back arm about an inch more. Good. And this is a grounded but really energizing pose. You can feel the connection with your feet on the earth and the energy almost moving through the fingers. And exhale, windmill the hands down to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, down dog. And again, just take this moment to rest here. I've learned over recent years that resting is just as important as exercising <laughs> in so many ways. It's very humbling. And inhale the left, left leg into the air. Exhale, step it forward and ground the back foot. And turn the right toes in uh, 15 degrees. Bend the left knee towards 90 degrees. 
Press into the outside of the right foot and inhale the arms to shoulder height, reaching with the both fingertips, looking out over the front finger. Engage the core. And everyone just shift the torso back of the pelvis about an inch. Good. So we're reaching forward with the left knee, but still maintaining the torso over the pelvis. Good. Engage the core and lift the, imagine the, uh, the pelvic floor is lifting up towards the belly button. And exhale, windmill the hands down to the mat, plank pose. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog. So you're on the tops of the feet here. And exhale, down dog. And we'll stay here for five rounds of breath. And bend the knees, look forward to the hands and exhale, step or jump the feet forward. Inhale, hands to shins, look forward. Really lengthen the spine here. And exhale, Uttanasana. Move the feet back together, press the inner thighs, release the back of the neck. And bend the knees, inhale, chair pose. Yeah, this is also called fierce pose. So you can imagine your inner fierce, your inner strength and power. And exhale, Tadasana. Beautiful. Okay, step the right foot over to the outside of the left ankle or bind behind the left calf. And sit back into the hips. Inhale the arms out to the side, palms facing up. Reach the fingertips away from you, so you're creating space between the shoulder blades. Firm the shoulder blades and then reach the fingertips again. Belly button to spine. And exhale, right elbow under left. Lift the elbows. Firm the shoulder blades. And turn inwards once more. So this is a great pose to to just see what's going on inside of you. It's almost like a hug to the body. And if you have a hard time balancing, just find something to focus on. Bring your attention to the breath and the body. And inhale the arms out to the side. Exhale the arms down and step the right foot over. Shake it out a little bit. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So step the left foot around. Good, press down into the right foot, all four corners and the left toes. And exhale, sit back into the hips. Inhale the arms out to the side, palms facing up. And again, reach the fingertips away. Firm the shoulder blades. Caroline, just lift the elbows a little bit more. Sorry, the arms, so they're in line with the shoulders. Good. And exhale, left elbow under right. And lift the elbows at the same time as you're firming the shoulders. Good. So you're almost like the shoulder blades are moving down the back like this. And again, take this moment to focus on body and the breath and the nervous system and just what's happening in the body right now. Take the time for you this week. And inhale, the arms out to the side and exhale, release. Good, okay, we're gonna step back with the right, sorry, the left leg into a lunge. And actually, yeah, sorry, left, back, left leg into a lunge. Okay, and then bring the hands to heart center. So press the thumbs into the sternum 
and then press down into all four corners of the front foot, belly button to spine, and then spring off the back leg and fold forward, reach back with the left foot. Again, like you're pressing into that wall behind you. And you can bend the front knee if you'd like. Both hip points are pointing down in this pose. So before, left hip was out to the side. This time they're both pointing down. Good. And this is a challenging pose, so it might take you a few attempts at it. And that's all good. It is really a journey with many yoga poses, but especially warrior three. And the journey, as we know in life, is not always linear. So one day may be easy, another day it might not be. Press back into the left foot. Push that wall away from you. And you can just gaze over the nose. Keep pressing the thumbs into the chest, connecting your thumbs to your heart space. And release the hands to the hips and come to stand. Let's shake it out. Pretty intense. Okay, and then step back with the right foot into a lunge. Good, bring the hands together at heart center again. Press the thumbs into the sternum. So the thumbs are pressing in and up. Belly button to spine. And then spring off the back foot and fold forward into warrior three. Virabhadrasana three. Belly button to spine. Press the wall away behind you with the right foot. Lengthen the spine. So we're lengthening through the crown of the head and the tailbone. Good, both hip points pointing down. Nice, easy, even breath. And take the hands to the hips and inhale, come to stand. Nice work. <laughs> All right, come to kneel on the ground. And you can just roll the mat if you'd like. Um, otherwise, it's kind of ch can be challenging on the knees. Um, and just bring two blocks with you. You don't need them right now, but have them close by. And then step the right foot forward. So we're in like a low lunge. And then walk the right foot forward a little bit more. And exhale forward into that right knee. And imagine the tailbone is grounding down towards the ground, is being pulled like a magnet towards the ground. And that just helps to lengthen the left hip flexor. Draw the belly button to the spine. And inhale, bring the arms to cactus arms. So elbow is in line with the shoulders. And then lift the chest. So we're drawing the shoulder blades down and away from each other. So we're not lifting the chest by moving the shoulder blades together. We're lifting the chest by lifting the heart. Nice, Caroline, just lift the elbows again so they're in line with the shoulders. Good. You know, it feels like it, right? <laughs> and then look up slightly, keep pushing forward into that right knee. Good, and then release the hands, come back to the low lunge and then straighten the right leg. And this is where you can use the blocks if you'd like. Press into the right heel and the toes draw back towards the shin in a half split. And we're lengthening the back of the leg by reaching forward with the heel and reaching back with the tailbone. And you can savor this lovely moment. <laughs> this is pretty challenging for a lot of us. Pretty good stretch on the hamstring, the calf, the back of the knee. And keep reaching back with that tailbone. And that gets right to the top of the hamstring here. Which I think is good for you, Caroline, right? <laughs> with your injury. Okay, and then come back to, to all fours. And then to bend the right knee and take the right foot to underneath the left hip for pigeon on the right. Okay, and just walk that left foot back. And you can take the, the block underneath the, the hip if you'd like. 
the right hip. So we're doing um, pigeon on the right. So the bent, the right knee is bent. I guess it doesn't really matter which side you do actually, but we are doing the right knee. Okay, and then fold forward onto the forearms and just pause here for a moment. And then exhale, take the forehead down towards the mat. And just release everything. Release the hips, release the shoulders and the jaw. And just allow the body to really melt down towards the mat. And take this moment to make an intention of letting go of everything that doesn't serve you in the next season. And we're gonna sink deeper, taking intentional breaths. And inhale, come back to all fours. Slide the right knee back so you're on all fours. And then step the left foot forward. And just walk the left foot beyond 90 degrees. And exhale forward into the left knee so the left knee is at 90 degrees. And imagine again the tailbone is a, a magnet being pulled down towards the ground. Belly button to spine. And take the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers, draw the hands away from the torso. So again, you're creating space between the shoulder blades. Keep pushing forward into that left knee. Lift the chest, belly button to spine. And release the hands, come back to center. Straighten the left leg. Press down into the left heel. You can use the blocks here. And lengthen through the tailbone. So moving the tailbone towards the back of the mat and pressing into the right heel, moving that forward. So we got, we're lengthening from both sides of the leg. And dorsal flex the foot. So draw the toes towards the shin. And we're looking for nice, even breaths here, especially when it's challenging. And then just take the blocks to one side and step the left foot down and then take the left foot to underneath the right hip and take the right left knee down for pigeon on the left. Good, walk that right foot back. So we've got lots of length on that right side and in the lower back. And then exhale, fold forward onto the forearms. And the forehead comes down to the mat. And we'll be here for about five more breath cycles. So just take this quiet time to reflect on the past season and think forward to the next season. And inhale, come back up onto the hands and slide the left knee back and then come to lay on your back with one block. So bend the knees and lift the hips, take the block at its lowest height underneath the sacrum and keep the feet on the floor for the moment. 
take the hands to the belly. Just feel the rise and fall of the belly with the inhale and exhale. And release the shoulders. Allow the sacrum to settle into the block. Okay, draw the belly button to the spine. Exhale, lift the right knee. And then exhale, lift the left knee. And flex the feet. Just stay here at 90 degrees for a moment. Again, check in with the body. Try to release any tension in the shoulders, lower back. And exhale, straighten both legs. Reach the heels up towards the ceiling. Draw the belly button towards the spine. And we're lengthening the spine from the tailbone through the crown of the head. Keep reaching up with the heels, down with the toes. And bend the right knee and bend the left knee. Draw the belly button to the spine and then slowly take the right foot down and slowly take the left foot down. Good, lift the hips, take the block away. Arms out to the side in the T position. And the feet are um, gonna stay at hip width apart. And exhale, the knees over to the right. Look out over the left shoulder. And release the gripping in the lower back. Close the eyes for a moment. And inhale back to center and exhale to the left, looking out over the right shoulder. And notice where you are still gripping. Notice the breath in the body. And inhale the knees back to center and then pick up the right leg and extend it as far to the bottom of the mat as you can and then release it down and extend the left leg to meet it and then release it and then take the hands to the back of the skull lift the skull up like in a sit-up take the chin to the chest and then lay the head back down with the back bottom back of the skull on the mat and then take the hands to opposite shoulders and just give yourself a hug and lift up the right shoulder blade Lift up the left shoulder blade and then take the arms down alongside the body, about six inches away from the body. And allow the toes to rest and fall away to the outside. And close the eyes. Again, just check in with the breath here. You don't have to change anything. You know, sometimes by just watching it, you become more intentional about the breath. Feel the back body sinking into the mat, the back of the skull, the shoulders, the backs of the arms, the hands, the back body and the glutes, the hamstrings and the calves and the heels, all melting into the mat. And for a moment, we're going to take this time to just focus on the body and the breath. So no matter what else you have to still do, whatever you might be worrying about. Just bring your attention to the body and the breath. OK, 
and we're all human so your mind probably wanders and when it does just gently bring it back without judgment to the body and the breath And bring your attention back to the room around you. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. And exhale, draw the knees in towards the chest. And rock side to side. And roll over onto the right. And just stay here for a moment. And then press into the floor with the left hand. And slowly come to sit. And we're just going to finish with one round of the Kapalabhati breath, just so that you can remember that for these next cold days, seriously cold days. Okay. <laughs> so um, take the hands on the thighs, and we're just going to be inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Okay. So take a nice breath and then start to pump with the exhales and as you do that the belly is going to come in and up okay and then take short sharp inhales and we'll do that for 20 rounds of breath Okay, and then take a nice long breath in. Hold for a second. And then release. And even with just doing one round of that, I don't know about you, but I can really feel like more fresh, if that makes sense, in my lungs. So it's good to do with all of the germs and um, like uh, uh, dry air from the heating. Okay, bring your hands together at heart center. Press the thumbs into the sternum, bow your head, and just bring to mind the person you dedicated your practice to today. And send them love and light and energy. Good, take an inhale. Namaste. Thanks for joining.